Hello and welcome. Have you ever wondered what is the average distance between two points in a circle? Today we want to calculate this distance. We will be using SymPy, which is a computer algebra system for symbolic computation in Python. Calculating the distance numerically is much easier. You could, for example, use a Monte Carlo simulation, choosing random values for x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, and then calculate the distance and then choosing many, like millions of points and calculating the distance and then averaging the distance. So this gives you a numerical estimate of the average distance. But today we want to do the calculation exactly and for this we use SymPy. I haven't used SymPy before. I will also give you a little bit introduction about the most basic functions of SymPy in this video. Let's get started. So in order to computations in SymPy we have to import this Python module. And so there are different ways how you can import Python modules. Uh, I prefer to import SymPy ISSP, so which means that I have to prefix all the symbols that come from SymPy with SP, but this way we know that they are coming from SymPy. So here I define the symbols x1, x2, y1, y2, and also r and h. And uh, so this is the way to define these uh, symbols with SymPy. And in the variables, uh, we then have the respective symbols and we can do symbolic computation with these symbols. So for example, the distance is the square root of the difference in, in x-axis and the difference in y-axis squared. So this looks like this, difference d is uh, this uh, formula. So that's basic Pythagorean theorem. And as you can see in the Jupyter notebook, the SymPy displays the formulas in a nicely formatted way using LaTeX. So um, in order to average over all the different values of x1, x2, y1, y2, uh, we do, could do integration. So to do integration in SymPy, we can write an integral, and then here the expression we want to integrate over, and then uh, what, we, what is the uh, variable for the integration, and also the boundaries. So here we want to use minus 1 and plus 1 for the variable x2. So then it would write this uh, integral and there's also a way to evaluate the integrals or at least to tell SymPy to try to evaluate because like evaluating uh, the integrals is not uh, always easy. We assume our circle has a radius of 1 and we go through all the values for x2 for example, we go from minus 1 to plus 1 and then the respective values for the boundaries for y2 would be minus square root of 1 minus x2 squared up to plus square root of 1 minus x2 squared. So if you could evaluate this integral, it's not as easy. Um, we would um, have the average distance of all the points in a circle to a given point x1, y1. And in order to have the, the total average of the lengths, we would also have to average over all the, all the possible points x1 and y1. And then we would again go from minus 1 to plus 1 for x. And then uh, square root of 1 minus uh, x1 squared plus minus uh, for for y. And so here we have four nested integrals. And so this would be really complicated to evaluate. I tried it with SymPy, but 
but uh, SymPy cannot do it and it would also be hard to do it by hand. So what can we do? So there's a trick that simplifies this calculation so that it can be done. And um, actually there are already some YouTube videos out there, so I will link to these videos that I used as inspiration myself uh, in the description. So here is how it works. So let's assume we have a function that describes the average distance um, given that we have the radius r of the circle. So then we assume that this function is a, a very simple linear function where the, the average distance is proportional to the radius. If the, if the circle is twice as large, the average distance of all the points should also be twice as large. So we have a function f of r is k times r. And um, so what we are interested is in in the value k. So we can uh, get this if we have the function, if we plug in 1. So we have f of 1 is k. But also if we derive the function regarding to r, so then f prime is also k. And so this Im instantly seems like we are making things more complicated, but actually things get easier. Let's see how the average distance between the points changes if we go from a circle with a radius capital R to a, light, a slightly larger circle R plus H. So if, if the if the we assume we already know the function f of r that calculates the average distance of the circles of the points inside the circle r and we also assume we know a function that calculates the average distance of a point that falls in the outer boundary with all the points in the in the inner circle so this function we call g of r and r plus h in order to do this, we first define f and g as sympy functions so that we can use them as function symbols in the future. And the next thing we do is we define a, a Python function with the name first order, which helps us to do a first order approximation. So the first order function takes as input the function and then also a variable uh, which we use for the first order uh, approximation. So first we calculate the function f prime by doing a ter derivative of the function that it was passed to the first order function regarding the delta variable. And then we say do it, so which means um, SymPy does not only write this as symbol but also directly compute, computes the derivative. So here we get f prime of fun regarding to this delta variable. And then so the f prime function could still have the delta variable inside and we are only interested in the term where the delta variable is small, so we do a we do a limit uh, of f prime if delta var goes to zero, and we also have a do it here, so this already calculates the limit when the delta var goes to zero. And last but not least, we calculate the point of the function uh, where the delta variable also goes to zero. So that would be the fun point. And then what we return is the, um, the evaluation of the function where the delta var goes to zero and then the first order terms times the delta var. Let's see how this works. For example, if we have the function x1 plus h squared and we say h is our 
delta variable. So then uh, the, the first order Python function will return the following term. So here we have uh, uh, x1 squared, so for small uh, values of h. So the approximate value of this uh, function is x1 squared and uh, the and the first order term is 2 times h times x1. So here I have defined symbols p in and p out for the probability uh, that a point falls inside the, the, the inner circle or for a probability that it falls in the in the outer ring. So you can define the symbols this way and then also um, SymPy nicely prints it in, in a latex form. Um, but we can also use them, uh, use uh, expression variables. So here I have a lowercase p in uh, where I calculate the probability that a point uh, falls inside the inner radius. Yeah, calculating this probability is easier. The probability that the points falls inside of these um, circles is proportional to the area of the circle. So there's a 100% chance that it falls in the circle R plus H and a slightly smaller um, probability that it falls in the circle R. So the areas are proportional to R squared. So also the probability that the point falls in the inner circle is then R squared over R plus H squared. Yeah, but what we are actually interested in is uh, the probability that uh, two points fall inside uh, the circle because we always have need two points to calculate the distance and the probability that two points fall inside the circle is the probability that one point falls in the circle squared so uh, and we are also only interested like in the first order approximation of this probability so we use our first order function and then uh, plug in uh, p in times p in and we are interested in the first order uh, approximation uh, of this f1. So, one second. Yeah. So, uh, we see the first order approximation of this probability is 1 minus 4h over r. Calculating the probability that the point falls uh, in the outer circle is also easy if we already have the probability that the point falls in the inner circle we only need to do one minus outer circle and um, again we are interested in two points and here we are interested in the probability that uh, the first point falls in the outer circle and the second point falls in the inner circle so this will be uh, points that have an average distance that is calculated from the boundary to an arbitrary point inside the circle. So if we use our first order for this p out times p in, uh, we get this expression. Now actually, uh, we have four cases to consider. So if we have uh, two points, so the two points can either fall inside the circle. So here we have p in times p in or the first point can fall outside and the second uh, point can fall inside but also the other way around so so if the first point falls inside and the second out point so since uh, the multiplication is commutative here so this will re give the same result so we have two cases uh, where where one point falls on the outer circle and one falls on the inner circle so we have to multiply this by 2. So the last case would be the probability that 
both points fall in the outer um, circle so in the in the boundary and here the probability would be p out times p out and we are again interested in the in the um, first order approximation only and we see that this value is zero so basically we have probabilities for the four cases so both points inside the the inner ring so this is the probability for this then the probability that uh, that um, one is on the inside and one in, is on the uh, outer ring so we have two times the the, the value of this because uh, either of the points can be first so that would be 4 h over r and as you can see this sums up to one so which leaves uh, nothing for the case where, where both uh, points are in the in the outer ring so uh, we define a symbol k and then we have the equation equation one and this equation is f plus f uh, evaluated at r plus h so the the new uh, average distance is the probability that both points fall in the uh, inner ring uh, so and if this is the case we we have the average distance f of r and then the probability that uh, the the that one point falls on the outer ring and one point falls on the inner ring so there we have the probability for h over r so two times uh, this expression uh, times g of r so g of r is the average distance of uh, of all the points to one point on the outer boundary so and we, we call this function g of r and so this is the equation of what happens if we increase the radius of our our circle by a small amount h so to simplify this equation i want to subtract uh, f of r from both sides of this equation and unfortunately there is no um, no nice function in sympy to do this so i define a python function here the function both sides and the both side function takes an equation as input and then applies this function here both to the left hand side and the right hand sides and construct a, constructs a sympy equation out of this and uh, we use this both side function to uh, to subtract uh, f minus r to both sides of this equation e1 so this results uh, in, in this equation and then we divide by h so if if we um, um, subtract f of r of both sides of the equation and then uh, then divide by h so we get the following equation and as you can see we have here f of r plus h minus f of r divided by h so which is kind of the der derivative of the function and on the right hand side there's some room for simplification simplification so we will let uh, sympy do this later but as you can see um, so if we say uh, python should calculate the limit of the left hand side where h goes to zero it sees that uh, this results in in calculating the derivative at the position uh, um, r and um, if we if we do the same thing to the right hand side so if we calculate the limit as h goes to zero of the right hand side we then get expression three and expression three is is like this term so at the next step we we create expression e4 
and expression e4 so we replace the the uh, left hand side of the equation which is which is f prime and we already know from the beginning that f prime is just a factor k and on the right hand side uh, we we do a substitution of the previous expression where we substitute for for the function f of r we substitute uh, k times r so let's do this so then we get the expression where we don't have the function uh, f anymore but only the factor k and then we want to solve this equation uh, for k so which is rather simple so we only need to multiply it by r and then bring the the 4r to the other side which gives 5r uh, but of course also sympy can do this if we say uh, sympy solve uh, expression 4 and we want to solve for k and this ex gives um, expression 5 expression 5 are the solutions uh, of this of this solve process and solutions potentially can always be more than one solution so what what if e5 gives here is is a list of solutions since there's only one solution so we take the the first one out and assign it to e6 so that's the expression e6 and this expression um, is for g of r divided by 5r so and this is like a really remarkable uh, result because now we have calculated the the factor k so the, the thing that we are interested in 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 terms of of only g of r so this way we have a much simpler um, simpler computation we only need to calculate uh, g of r which is the average distance of one point on the border of the circle to all the points inside of the circle and of course we can uh, pick like a particular point so since uh, all the points should have equal distance so this should make no difference so let's take uh, this point and calculate the average distance to all the other points within the circle which then gives us the function g of r and once we have calculated g of r we can then use this expression 5 to calculate uh, the the average distance between the points in the circle we just need to plug in g of r and then we get as a result e6 which is which is equal to k okay so let's do this let's calculate the average distance so we have the point on the border which is this point and then we take all the points within the circle and uh, the distance uh, of the point to the inside points we call s and the uh, uh, angle here is 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 alpha and uh, in order to reach all the points we have to run with alpha from minus p half to plus p half and then we need to run from s from from zero to the edge of the circle so we need to calculate the, the edge of the circle let's do this so in symbi we define the symbols s and alpha and then the the lengths uh, so here i'm interested in in where the where this ray um, um, hits the the circle so this would be uh, with the cosine rule so this would be the square root of of um, 2 plus 2 cosinus of 2 alpha so um, and there's a way to to um, simplify this equation so i tried to do it with with sympy but uh, it it wasn't able to to simplify the equation so i had to use a, a, a 
well-known formula where, where um, cosinus of 2 alpha is the same as 2 times cosinus of alpha squared minus 1 and I use the replace function to replace cosinus with with 2 times cosinus of 2 alpha and then this gives 2 times cosinus uh, squared alpha square root and the square root and the square cancel out so at the end we have the equation that that the maximum of s is 2 times cosinus of alpha so this gives us a way to calculate the, the area of the circle so in a rather complicated way because normally you would not do this in in this way so if we go with alpha from minus pi half to plus pi half and then uh, uh, the s from zero to two times r times cosinus of alpha uh, and we calculate uh, sds uh, the alpha so this should be uh, the area of the circle uh, if you look at uh, this picture so the we are summing up about infinitesimal small uh, squares uh, with a, with where the one length is uh, delta s and uh, this side would be s times delta alpha so in order to sum up uh, all the the parts of the circle uh, we have to have an, an s inside of the of the integrand and this should then give us uh, the the area of the circle just to make sure that we do not have a an, an error in, in our formula here so let's run this so this integral and then if we use do it and then simpy evaluates this as pi times uh, r squared exactly what we expected but what we are not interested uh, in in the area of the circle so we already know this uh, what we are interested is in the average distance uh, of this point uh, to this uh, small area areas so we have to multiply uh, the the small area which is uh, s d s d alpha uh, times s s is the the then the distance and with the s d s times s we get s squared d s d alpha um, in the integral and if we do the same integral here with the uh, s squared so that's a rather simple integral um, if we do this um, um, and div divide it by the area so then we get the average distance of of the points on the circumference towards all the points inside of the circle uh, and the result here is uh, 32r divided by 9 pi now this this is our function uh, g of r and all that is left is to plug it in in our previous results the previous result said that uh, that k so the thing we are looking for that we got in expression e6 is uh, 4g of r divided by 5r and now if we use sympy and say we want to substitute in this expression g of r uh, with our uh, result from here and then we get 128 divided by 55 pi which is actually the average distance of the points in a circle with radius 1. So that's it. Um, if you like it uh, give it a thumbs up and um, I also linked the, the Jupyter notebook and the original videos that I used as an inspiration in the description.